Hello there. Um, my name is Jim Lake. I'm with the uh, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and uh, this is actually the the last of uh, a series of PowerPoint uh, presentations I'm making on uh, planar geometric proje uh, projections. So previously we've talked about perspective pro projections, parallel projections, including um, oblique and orthographic projections. We've talked some about the geometry uh, needed to generate isometric projections. Now we'll talk about isometric uh, sketches. So in terms of the, the, the isometric sketching axes, in, in the, the last presentation I made, uh, we talked about to, to create a uh, isometric projection, um, we would rotate an object, if we started with this front face and we we're looking directly at that front face, we'd rotate 45 degrees um, about a vertical axis and then we'd tip the, the object out of the, uh, the ground plane so that it was uh, oriented somewhat like this. Well, it turns out that if we, um, we actually measure, if we drew a horizontal line and measured um, this object after applying that 45 degree and 35.26 rota uh, degree rotation, that these angles would actually be uh, exactly 30 degrees. So when we do an isometric sketch, we have the, the three axes that we're using, the principal axes, or one will be vertical and the other will be up and to the right at 30 degrees, up and to the left at 30 degrees. Um, a word on the scaling uh, that is achievable in an isometric uh, sketch. Now, one of the key things we talked about when we were uh, discussing isometric projections is that the, the principal axes of the object are all scaled or foreshortened by an identical amount. So for this object here, the principal axes would be along this edge, this x-axis, the y-axis, and then a vertical, which you don't see here because of this oblique um, surface, but a vertical axis. So in an isometric sketch, all edges that are parallel to one of the principal axes are scalable. Okay, so that means we can get real dimensional information from them and compare back and forth between the real world object and the projections using different proportional uh, techniques. So here, if we just look at some of these edges, this edge AB, you'll notice that it is parallel to this principal axis here, so I can get real uh, uh, information uh, regarding the, the length of this edge because it is parallel to this principal axis. In the case of this edge BC, uh, it is not parallel to either X, Y, or Z, so I can't get any actual, directly I can't get any dimensional information on the true length of the edge CB. In the case of CD, well, that's parallel to the x-axis, so yes, in fact, that is measurable. We can measure directly uh, this length and that will give us a, depending upon the, the scaling between the actual object and the, and the projection, presumably there they're scaled the same so we can predict uh, the actual true length of the edge CD. DE, again, it is not parallel to any of the three principal axes, so it is not measurable, not scalable. Okay, so now the, just the procedure for 
creating an isometric sketch of a, a cut block. Say we're given something like this, we're given a cavalier oblique and asked to produce an isometric view of this same object. Well, once again, the same procedure applies. You, you draw a proportionally correct bounding box. You notice the axes, the horizontal, up and to the right 30 degrees, up and to the left 30 degrees. Lay out that, get the proportions right. Then you go in and you locate the different vertices of the object and then finally you go bold. So that's the, the typical technique. Here's just an example of how you might approach drawing a, an isometric sketch of a cylinder. So here, if it's, if it's on an axis, kind of a horizontal axis, it's a horizontal cylinder. Um, we, we locate the, the end points, essentially the center points of the, the, the front and back uh, faces of the, the cylinder. Um, the next step is we can actually lay out kind of a, uh, a, a trapezoid. When, when I draw a, a circular shape in an isometric view, it will actually have an elliptical shape. So if I lay out this grid work, I, I've laid out the quadrant points of that circular face. And, but in addition, in drawing the, the trapezoid, now when I go to draw this, I know that not only does that, that elliptical shape have to pass through the quadrant points, but in addition, it has to be tangent to the sides of the trapezoid. So there I've done that. And then you do something similar uh, for the, the back face. Um, you draw lines tangent to the, the two ellipses to represent the limiting elements of the cylinder, and then you go bold. Here's an example of uh, drawing, uh, um, uh, sketching holes on the face of a cube. So again, I'm, I'm really doing the same thing I did in the previous slide. It's just now I'm going to draw them on the three different faces, and this is the result. And then finally, here's just an example of doing a, a more complicated object, an object with arcs, using this isometric uh, sketching approach. We lay out the... Uh, the bounding box. In this case, we've drawn a couple of bounding boxes, located the uh, center points and the quadrant points for any circular arcs, um, uh, continued on drawing the, uh, the, the bottom edges of the, the holes so that we can represent the uh, uh, visible edges of the object. So uh, this concludes the, uh, the segment on isometric sketching, and for now at least, it also concludes the, uh, the series of uh, PowerPoint uh, lecture slides on uh, planar geometric projections. Uh, I'm Jim Lake, University of Illinois. Thank you.